Welcome everyone to our Tuesday night friendship group. Uh, as you all know, uh, my, my name is Luis Bojorquez, and this is my beautiful wife, Sister, Sister Bojorquez. Uh, before we get started, we just want to thank you for joining us. We are so happy and excited that you are here with us tonight. Uh, before we get started, I'm going to get into a word of prayer. So if you can just bow your head and, and pray with us. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, mighty God, for this wonderful evening, Father. We pray that you would bless us tonight, God, with your word, with your anointing. Father, allow the Holy Ghost to move in us and through us, mighty God, that every person that is watching, mighty God, would hear your word, that they would put this seed in their heart, God, and cover it, Lord God, with your blood so that it can continue to root, mighty God. Father, we thank you for everyone that is here, Lord God, listening, Father. Bless their home, bless their children, God, and bless us here tonight, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So before we get started to our lesson, uh, I'm going to have my beautiful wife uh, lead us into a, a, a worship song. Amen? Yes. All right. If you want to join us, then lift up your hands and give God some glory in Jesus' name. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire. So when we give unto God, 
God is able to give us uh, even more, okay? He's not a God of adding, but a God of multiplication. So when we are able to uh, take away the pleasures that, are, that pleasure us and give pleasure unto the Lord, it's going to bless our soul, our mind, and our heart. And not only that, but it will trickle down to your wife, your children, uh, you know, your workplace, wherever you're at, it's going to bless each and every one of them. Amen? Amen. All right, amen. Uh, we're going to get into our second scripture, okay, and follow us to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 4. So if you want to get your Bible and follow us there, amen, in Jesus' name, 2 Timothy, amen, praise God, 3, 1 through 4. So let's get into the word. It says, uh, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, in incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. So we see in the scripture that there are people that just want to please themselves. At the end, it's all about pleasing themselves. God uh, talked about all these other people, but it all adds up because it pleasures them to be those type of titles, you can say. So uh, it all brings pleasure to the flesh. So when the flesh is very strong, it, it doesn't please the Lord because the Bible says that our carnal mind brings forth death. So we must have a spiritual mind because it brings forth life. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to read uh, something I wrote. It says, we see in the scripture that in the last days, these types of people are going to rise up who are going to be against the word of God. These are just some types of people who are not going to make it into the kingdom because they desire to be pleasures of themselves and not unto God Almighty. We are living in these days where people are only into themselves and not to the Lord Jesus Christ. They have no heart to love but to hate and only please themselves. We are living in these days where people are proud and arrogant and only think about themselves. That's why we must stay connected to the body of Christ and receive the truth and maintain a holy life so, what, so we won't get caught up in the mess of the world. We must shine and show the light of Jesus Christ. We must not seek our own pleasures but rather bring pleasure unto the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we learn to bring pleasure unto God, then God is going to have pleasure unto us, and that's going to bring blessings into our lives. See, when we only pleasure ourselves, we're actually denying the Spirit of God and trying to make Him happy rather than make ourselves happy. So when we get connected to the Spirit, then God is going to show us how we should talk, how we should act, how we should walk, and that is going to bless our home, our families, and everything around us, okay? So uh, really think about these scriptures, okay? I don't want you to meditate on them. If you can, please, we have time to do that in Jesus' name. Um, the next scripture I'm going to get into uh, is Mark chapter 4, uh, verse 13 through 20, okay? So if you can follow us to those scriptures, that'll be awesome. Amen. Um, Mark chapter 4, verse 13 through 20. Amen. Praise God. Here we go. Uh, and he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word, and these are laid by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure before a time. After, afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, from sixtyfold, and some a hundred. So, uh, there's a, a man who sows the word of God, right? Um, so we see here uh, that there are four grounds, right? The wayside are those who hear it, but Satan comes immediately and takes it away. 
See, when people are afar off, they hear the word, but it's like it goes through one ear through the other. Those are people who don't believe and not allow God to enter into their heart because they are blinded by Satan and have no desire to know God. The second ground uh, we see is that it's a stony ground where the seed is sown, but because there is no root, it cannot grow and be rooted, right? So when, it, when life hits them and they go through a little trial, they give up because they did not root themselves in the Lord. So we have this uh, the stony ground where the root, there's no root. So when the storms come and, and the trials come into their lives, they easily immediately start to blame God and they cannot receive the word and they easily leave the church or they stop coming around. And that's what happens when uh, uh, people are not rooted into Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. Amen? So we must stay rooted and connected with the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Um, so when life, um, I'm sorry, the third uh, ground was the thorny ground, where the believer hears the word, but then gets distracted by the things of the world, like the riches, the concerns, and the pleasures of the world. Okay? Um, and I'm going to talk a little quick of testimony of myself. It says, so I began to live for God. I believed in his word. I began to go to church and believe the gospel, right? I got baptized. I received the Holy Ghost. Um, and I thought I was good and ready to live for God. But as I began my journey, the thorns began to spring up. And the cares and pleasures of this world began to rise up in my life again. And it brought me back to a place where I was before I met God. I began to desire the things of the world again because I allowed the spiritual junk to substitute God. And I left the church because the thorns choked, uh, choked me out. And I lost focus of God and placed my focus on the pleasures. But I'm so thankful that I have made my ground good and allowed the Holy Ghost to lead me and guide me. And now I have good ground and my fruit has been good fruit because I have surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Um, you know, we cannot have spiritual junk food because it will fill you up and allow God to, and not allow God to fill you up. The reason why so many believers experiment with sin is because they have not enjoyed the joy of the Lord and have been satisfied with sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin bring forth death. Okay, so remember, when you are working for something, at the end of the week, you're expecting a paycheck. So it's the same thing with sin. If you continue in your sins, uh, you're going to get paid and you're going to get recompensed for the sins that you have done in your life. And that's why a lot of people go to so many trials because they do not allow God to, to help them out of their trial or, or bring them out of the darkness into his light. Um, and that's the things that I've experienced with, and I'm pretty sure my wife has experienced. We've both experienced that in our marriage. Um, but when we finally gave our lives to Christ, uh, we were able to have good ground, and, that's, and that has blessed our lives. Amen? Amen. Um, so, uh, sin will destroy you, but the love of God will save you. Let's please the Lord and not ourselves. Amen? God wants us to enjoy, but we cannot make the pleasures a God and substitute them for God. We must learn to have self-control and put God first. The pleasures of the flesh bring an immediate satisfaction, but the problem is that it doesn't fill you up and leaves you emptier than before. Okay? So yes, it does feel good. It does feel good to bring pleasure to the flesh. But at the end of it, you're always going to be empty because it does bring an immediate satisfaction. It does feel good uh, wherein you're in your flesh, but when, as, the, as the time goes by, Remember, the wages of sin bring forth death. So you have to understand that the more you sin, the more you accumulate it, the more it's gonna, uh, the more it's gonna tear you down. So that's why we must give our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, and that's why we must love God and give Him absolute devotion, so that our soul can be satisfied and we don't have to continue to look for the next pleasure. Amen. Amen. So at the end of this, uh, the word is that we must. Uh, allow the word of God to be sown in our hearts. Uh, let's, not have, let's not have a stony heart. Let's not have a thorny heart. But let's have a heart of flesh to where God can pour his, his love into it. And we must open up to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the pleasures of this world are going to tear us down. So the more we pleasure God, the more we're going to receive. And the more blessed our lives are going to be. Amen? Amen. So we're going to have a couple discussing questions. Okay? And I'm going to read them out to you, okay, in Jesus' name. 
Uh, first question is, why do you suppose God created so many pleasures in this life when he doesn't want his followers living for pleasure? Mm -hmm. Do you have uh, an answer? Anything you want to? I, I feel that he allows it because um, it would test me not to see it. I mean, he wants us to enjoy life and have pleasure, but he also wants us to put God first Amen. in everything that Amen. we do, and he wants to be number one in our life. Sure does. Amen. Praise God. So, uh, well, God wants to test our, our love and our faith in him. We can absolutely do things that make us happy, but when we rather make God happy, it will bring blessings into our lives. It also tests our genuine love for God. Amen? Um, I believe that God tests us as we're living in this earth, um, you know, and he wants us to see how much we love him genuinely. Uh, just like a marriage, you know, you don't want uh, your husband looking at a, another woman or your wife looking at another man uh, because it's a, it's a commitment to, the, uh, to our marriage. The same thing with God. So God is a jealous God. Remember that. But let's please the Lord. He's the one that's going to save us. He's the one that's going to uh, give us strength every day to wake up. So let's give God honor, praise, and glory. Amen. Uh, second question is, how does, it, how does an obsession with pleasure lure a believer away from God? When you, uh, yeah, well, what are some obsessions that can lure, lure us away from God? Well, when you're not praying and not giving God, not living for God the way you're supposed to, of course Amen. you're going to be drawn to the things of the flesh and it's going to overtake you. So when you give yourself to God, it's not that you would avoid doing that because you're living for the Lord and so you're going to put the things of the flesh aside. Amen. And that's one way that people get drawn away from Amen. It's like a trap. Yeah. Amen. It's yeah. A it's a snare. Um, when you have not completely surrendered to God, uh, when your flesh is fed more than the spiritual man, we can become lured by the by the devil when our Holy Ghost is low and we don't pray, we don't fast, we don't read our Bibles, okay? Uh, we don't go to church and even have a relationship with God. That's how you're lured away by the world, your flesh, and the devil. Stay focused and put your whole trust in God. You know, a lot of times we get uh, distracted uh, by the things of the world. And a lot of times people, uh, they lose their focus on God because they are not praying, they are not fasting, they are not reading the word, they are not staying committed to the church and to the man of God who is, our, who is your pastor or to the leadership of the church. So a lot of times people are lured away because they have too much care to the world, they, uh, they, they want to be in the world. So a lot of times people fall because they don't have a great relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so tonight, um, I just want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, we want to thank you all for listening to us. Uh, me and my wife are very happy and excited to see you guys blessed tonight. We, this is a word from the Lord, and I pray that you would receive it, that you would take it home, that you would pray about it and, and give it to your children, to your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, and everyone that's, that's connected to you. Uh, but before we, we finish, we would like to get into a word of prayer before we dismiss. Amen? Amen. And, and let's bow our heads, everyone. Amen? Uh, Heavenly Father... We just want to thank you, mighty God, because you are so good, Father. Lord, allow your word, mighty God, to penetrate every heart, every mind, and every soul, God. Lord, your word says that it's like a, a two-edged sword, God, that cuts, Lord God. And I pray, God, that it would cut every bad thing, mighty God. And Lord God, I pray a blessing among each and every listener. And I pray, God, that this word would fall into their hearts. And I rebuke the devourer. I rebuke every enemy and every devil that would try to take this away from them, mighty God. Let them hold, hold this, Lord God, into their hearts, oh God, like a treasure, God, like, like a diamond, like, like, a, like a gem, a jewel, mighty God, to hold it together, mighty God, and not let any enemy take it away, Father. Lord, I pray of the, your blood upon them, God, and we just want to thank you. We want to honor you, God, for what you are doing in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. But we want to thank you all for coming. We want to thank you for listening. And, we, and I pray that this bless you in Jesus' name. Hey there, Kids for Christ. Thank you for joining us for a fun time of arts and crafts. Today we're going to be making a heart that says, Jesus loves me no matter what. Now, for, before we get started, there's a few things we're going to need. We're going to need construction paper, markers, crayons, glue, 
a black marker and some scissors. Now, if you don't have construction paper, you can also use white printer paper. And if you don't have printer paper, you can use, if you have a notepad, you can tear out a few pages from there and you can, it'll work just fine. Okay, so let's get started. First thing you're gonna do is, what I did was I made five hearts. I folded the paper in half. It was, oh, that's what you do. You fold it in half. And then you just make, let me go over that with the marker. You go over it with this and you do one heart. It's going to be like that, okay? Two hearts. Three hearts. Oops, excuse me. Four hearts. This is kind of hard for this for me for this one. So let's see. This is going to be your fourth heart right here. And then this is your fifth heart. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is you're gonna get a piece of construction paper. You're gonna fold that in half as well, the long way, just to match this one. You're gonna lay it on top of here, okay? So I've already cut the first three hearts, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just cut the two last hearts that I need, which will be this heart and that heart. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna need a pair of scissors, these are just my scissors, so you can go ahead and use the smaller scissors for, for kids. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to cut this heart here. <clears throat> the reason why I'm cutting this one is because I've already cut the smaller hearts. I've already cut these previously, so I already have those cut. The ones that are missing are these, the bigger ones. So here's one heart, and then I need to cut the biggest one heart. Biggest heart again, which is this one here, and you're gonna line it up again like that, and you're gonna cut again. So let's try that right here. Here we go. Cut that. Okay. So then we put that down. We don't need this anymore. We're not going to need that anymore. And then you have your last heart. Okay, so then you're going to put that heart in here. Like I said, I already have the other hearts cut. So this is what it would look like, like this. Alrighty, so then once you've gotten to this point, what you're going to do is you're going to get your glue. Okay, we can put that aside here. And you can go ahead and glue the middle of the heart. Get a good quote, that way it'll stick. And then you're gonna go ahead and put this heart on top of there. Kind of line it up close as much as possible down here because you're gonna need space right up here because we're gonna be writing on that part. Okay, so then you're gonna do the same thing again. Glue. And you're going to get your third heart. Put it right there, like that. And the fourth heart. Okay. Oops. Right there. And then your last heart. Okay. And then, let's see. Okay, and then you're gonna go ahead and glue it right in the middle right here. That one's gonna be nice right there. Okay, so once you've gotten to this point, what you're gonna do is um, you're going to get your marker, or if you don't have a marker, you can use a pen, whichever you prefer, and you're gonna write in the middle. You can go ahead and write, Jesus loves me. Since I had space here, I just wrote down, this I know, because we do know that Jesus loves us, right? All right. He loves us when we are happy. Okay. And when we are sad.
He loves us when we're good. And when we are bad. Jesus loves us no matter what. Me. No matter what. And that is very important to remember because Jesus loves us anytime. Does it matter what we have done? Does it matter what we do? As long as we can come to the Lord when we're bad and we can ask him for forgiveness, he's going to forgive us. And that is so important to know. So this is what the heart looks like. My previous one that I made. And this is what it will look like if you are going to be using regular, regular white printer paper. I think these are very nice reminders that Jesus loves us no matter what. So this will conclude our arts and craft, and I just hope that you have enjoyed it as much as I have. May God bless you, and you have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.